So at this point I've talked about pretty much every currently ongoing manga in Weekly Shonen Jump. Over the past year I've made videos where I just talk about a whole bunch of series, a whole, whole bunch of new things that have come out. Some series were, were great and they needed their own video because I couldn't get all my thoughts out in just a short one. Now we're at the point where a bunch of those shitty series are getting brutalized by the axe and we'll soon have a whole bunch of new stuff to talk about. But before that I wanted to make a video about the one series that I had yet to check out. That series is of course Act Age. I know it's pronounced Actage. I fucking hate that. Like that, that's a horrendous name. I'm never pronouncing it like that. This is a series that is slowly becoming quite popular. And I finally decided to check it out when I heard like a lot of praise for it. Like a lot of people I know have been like, yo, Act Age is, is some quality. So I'm like, okay, people also think Samurai 8 is some quality. I don't know about this. So I gave it a read. There's 92 chapters out now, read through them all, and uh, here we go. Act Age follows Kei Yonagi, a high school student uh, who is struggling to take care of her younger brother and sister after her mom died and her, her dad fucked off out of there. Three whole humans to take care of, not on my watch. So, you know, they're in kind of a rut and now Yonagi is trying to find work. Specifically work in the field that she feels she excels in, acting. As we see her going around and auditioning for roles and movies, plays, and whatever. Now one time during the process of auditioning for a role, she's discovered by a director named Kuriyama. And while he realizes that Yonagi isn't that great of an actress in certain areas, what she can do extremely well, in fact it's some of the best he has ever seen, is method acting. Now if you don't know what method acting is, this is when like an actor sort of recalls a past experience, how they felt during that time, what, what their emotions were like, and they sort of bring that experience to the forefront. So what Yonagi is really doing is acting like herself as she acted in past situations. Now Kuriyama's like, hold, hold the fuck up, you're, you're incredible, c c come join my studio, we'll, we'll, we'll do something, I'll, I'll get you some roles, I'll, I'll make you a better actress, and hey, maybe maybe you can star in my movie someday, I'm making a movie, it's, it's gonna be awesome. Win-win scenario, let's go. So they take off, he gets her a bunch of gigs starring in commercials or whatever, and eventually he gets her a minor role in a shitty teen movie called Death Island. Specifically a movie that Yonagi will have a very hard time method acting in. You know, this is like a shitty Battle Royale, Hunger Games, you know, a bunch of kids killing themselves, whatever. Yonagi's never been in that situation. She, she don't know what to do. And this is where her acting journey begins of improving, becoming a better actress. Along the way, she meets many influential figures. There's Chiyoko, who is uh, the, the main star of Death Island. Uh, and she becomes friends with Yonagi, but also a very fierce rival. Because Chiyoko's like, hold on. Hold on, who, who does this bitch think she is? She come in here with her, her stupid method acting and, and she's stealing the spotlight away from me? Not on my watch. So you know, that fun stuff's going on. She, she's making a bunch of other friends, a bunch of other actors. And from there, that, that, that's it. That, that's what this series is. It, it's Yonagi's journey of becoming a better actress. And uh, oh my god, is it fucking good. Not prepared for this. Like, I, I was, I heard it was good. I was like, oh yeah, this will probably be a fun little series. I actually think this might be my favorite current Jump series now. And that really says a lot because I really love some of the other things that are currently in the magazine. But this one really, really blew me away. For one, it's such a unique premise, uh, you know, especially for Weekly Shonen Jump. Right off the bat, what sets this apart from anything else in the magazine currently is that it's a more grounded, realistic story. You know, it takes place in the real world. Yeah, no, no way this one takes place in our world, Jesus Christ. Obviously, you know, with Shonen Jump, there's still a bit of exaggerated elements to it all. But this really feels like a story of something that could easily happen in real life. Okay, maybe not easily, but, but, but you know, it's all, it's all feasible stuff. It also deals with subject matter that I, I don't feel we really see very often. That, that, that's actors. You know, we always see behind the scenes stuff of films. We see how people made the films, you got the director doing behind the scenes stuff, but you never really focus on the actors, like well, what they do to prepare for roles. You usually just think, oh yeah, an actor is an actor, they can act, that's what they do, but you never really think about how they improve over time and different techniques that you can learn different ways of acting, getting into character. Because like I said before, Yonagi starts off not really knowing much except for method acting. And the way she learns other things is really fantastic. Sometimes she realizes that method acting is the way to go and in order to do that, she's gonna have to create some new experiences for herself. Or maybe sometimes go back to old experiences that she'd really rather not remember like that she had locked away. All great stuff and this isn't just for Death Island. Like the Death Island's only like the first arc and it's not very long. There, 
There have been several other arcs since then. Each one of these arcs is so great because I mean it's really the same thing over and over again. Yonagi is acting in something, but of course it's all different depending on what she's acting in, who she's acting with, who's who's her director, who's instructing her, and it's all just great engaging stuff. They, they always throw curveballs your way. Like you think you know where it's gonna go. Oh yeah, yeah it's just a play. They're, they're gonna act in it. It'll be cool. Whatever. Then all of a sudden it's like, haha, nope, there's way more to this than you thought. Fuck you. And that's when this series really became fantastic for me. Around like the chapter 40s or 50s. I mean, I was really, really enjoying it up until then. But at this point, they throw a huge emotional weight on your shoulders. And my god, was it well done. It really shocked me how poignant it got. Like, God damn. I wasn't expecting to question my own mortality. What are you doing to me? Also, all the characters that Yonagi meets along the way are fantastic. I mean, every time she's in a new project, we get a bunch of new faces, a whole bunch of new actors, because obviously she's moving from project to project, the casts are all changing. There's definitely a few mainstays, some characters who, you know, are a lot of times they're in the same thing as Yonagi, but, but not always, you know, this series has no problem pushing someone aside when it doesn't make sense. But, you know, so many characters with so little time to get development, you, you think it would feel a bit like messy but it really doesn't. They do such a good job establishing these characters. And the way they help Yonagi grow is just fantastic. You know, it's not just other actors she's meeting. You know, she's also a high school student. She still goes to school when she can. And there's a bunch of characters there who are also fantastic. But Yonagi herself is really my favorite character in this series because she's just so interesting. She, she's a, a very unique protagonist because, you know, she's weird. Yeah, she's a weirdo. She do she doesn't fit in. And seeing how her improvement with her acting uh, affects her, you know, real life character development, it's all so good, man. It's it's so fantastic. And to top it all off, I really love the art style in this one. Again, with it being you know like a more grounded series, you're not going to see any any crazy shit going on. But I think the character designs are really appealing and fantastic. So yeah. Fantastic series. If I were to rate it now, I swear to God I'd actually give it a 10. It, it's that fucking, I absolutely love it. Like I'm, like I said, I'm all caught up in the newer chapters. I won't say anything, but, but things are, things are crazy. I love it. I love it so much. So go read it. You clowns. If anyone, anyone's sleeping on act age, I don't want to see it. Head on over to Shonen Jump. You can read the, read the newest chapters for free. You, you pay the $2 a month. You can read the backlog. Problem is the backlog's missing. <laughs> Biz. Biz. You're just encouraging piracy. Just add the other chapters. What are you doing? Because it doesn't make sense that the newer chapters are available for anyone to read, but the older ones, they just aren't there. You can't legally read them in English. What? <laughs> anyway, but that being said, it is getting an English release from Viz next summer. So, fuck yeah, man. And I, I think at this point, it's very, very likely this one will get an anime. Because like I said, it's been growing in popularity. It has enough chapters now for an anime to work. And that that idea really, really makes me excited. Because there, there's a lot more they can add to this. If you know you have a good soundtrack, voice acting especially. So with that, thank you all so much for watching. You can leave your thoughts on ActAge down below. And I will see you all in the next video. What will it be? Will it be the Tokyo Ghoul review? Will it be the new Shonen Jump video? Will it be Vagabond? Who, who knows? We'll see.